bit of blacksmithing. I'm not an expert blacksmith by no means, but what I've got is an old forge with a hand crank blower on it. And I'm building a tomahawk and I stuck a lawnmower blade in here. I'm going to build me a Bowie knife. I like my little bushcraft knives, but I like a Bowie knife. I've, I've played with a knife over the course of this winter, hunting, fishing, skinning. And I can't see where the drop tilt design that I've been using on the last couple of knives is benefiting me more than I think of the Bowie style tip wood because I don't baton that much. And if I do, I think I can build one that I can still baton and not break the tip off of it. So we're going to attempt it and we're going to see what we do. I'm not going to put a real sharp tip on it. I want it though where I can split, stick, and just some other tips I'm not happy with them. So let me get this going. some reason it wasn't forcing enough air through there to get this as hot as I wanted it. Just starting to turn back a little red. I'm going to show you what I was doing here. How to kind of step around that post. But this was a ball peen hammer. And you can see I've got it. I don't know if you can tell. But I've got it pretty close. I've been working on this off and on for, I, I started it over a year ago. But I hadn't made a video, been super busy, and it's 20 something degrees out tonight. And it was a good time to fire up the forge. I'm not a, I hadn't had time to do, I've been working on pottery and hadn't had time to make a video. And I just decided I wanted to kind of make this. I'll tell you what prompted the knife. I wanted a little bigger knife where I could chop. I've been working on some bows. Split open some old sage that I went and collected. I got my shave horse sitting here. So I've been working on several different projects and uh, you have to excuse all my junk out here. I don't have anywhere else to put all my stuff so that I can make my videos more presentable. I wish I could, but this is real life here. <laughs> already starting to sleet out here hitting on the tin roof here. All this started because I had a axe head. I don't know if you can see anything out here. If I get over here and it's against that wall you can kind of see it. But anyway, it was an axe head that I uh, threw in the fire to burn the stuff. I couldn't get the uh, piece of the handle that broke off in there. I couldn't get it out no other way. I punched on it, beat on it, drilled on it, and I got impatient and threw it in the fire. Do not do that. That is a mistake because you'll take the temper out, which I, did, I knew that when I did it because I knew I could retemper it. So what I did was I heated the cutting edge up on that thing dipped it in my oil, and re-hardened re the edge of that axe handle. 
axe head, and I've got a new handle that I'm going to put in there. But while I had the forge heated up, I started playing with this and decided that I would film some of it. Gotta get that thumb off here. I feel like that every person that's gone, and this is what I call a somewhat homestead. We work, and uh, we're by no means off grid or anything, but this week we're looking at possibly being without power for a few days. The ice storm, this rain's freezing rain. Depending on how much builds up on the power line, it's not supposed to get above freezing. This is Sunday night for like three days. It's going to be Wednesday at best or Thursday before they're giving anything above freezing. So if power goes out, you know, you should be prepared and know how to do things. So, and I mean, you shouldn't have to blacksmith because your power's out two or three days. My point is, is you shouldn't be solely dependent upon those things just another day. But we work and, and make pottery, so... I think everybody should learn some skills on how to do some things. I'm more, I'm more apt to use something that I made than something I went and bought. I just know the stuff that I make is not as pretty as something you go buy. I'll never make a buoy knife right here in this forge that's as pretty as somebody else's that you'll go to town and buy. Is it as good? Yes. Will it serve the purpose? Yes. Can I make it as sharp and as long lasting? Yes. And I can make it as beautiful if I take the time, and that's what I'm, my goal is to do. But I, I want to learn how to make bows. I want to learn how to shoot traditional archery. I'm learning that, and I'm going to start doing some videos of that. I don't try to do this, these videos as a, I'm teaching you how to blacksmith. I'm just kind of letting you see what, what goes on here, what I do. Uh, and let you know that as an average person, you can do these things. You just have to have the mindset that, hey, I'm going to try that. You can do it. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to compete with any, anybody that's a blacksmith. There's some professional guys out there that do a whole lot better job than I'm doing of this. A lot of them people. have a real good eye. I don't really have that anymore. But I'm thinking I'm done with it. I want it to be rough somewhat. I think we're going to lay this to the side. We're going to work on our knife. My forge right here is not real big. I can't heat the entirety of the blade up. So, my. Uh, this, what 
What I'm going to do is attempt to grind on this. close I'm going to probably take a file and hand do my edge on it because I want it to and I'm not going to temper it till I'm pretty close but what I'll do that was like I said that was a ball peen hammer let me get a little closer Just let you guys see what I've got right here it's camera will focus on it maybe in that light you can tell a little bit see it's it's not bad now it's not perfect by no means I'm not one of these perfectionists. Everything has to be just perfect. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a tomahawk that I can go chop wood with. If it does that, it's success in my book. I know a lot of people, they want to, oh, I want everybody to see how beautiful and how much of a craftsman and all that, and if that's what you like, you need to do it that way. I'm not against those people. But that's not my goal. When I make something, I'm making it for function. I want it to look decent. I want it to last. I want it to, but I'm not worried about that that may have one slight waver in it. But actually, I think that's pretty straight if you want to know the truth. If I can get it in something there's any imperfection in it it's hard for my eyes to see it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a thing now, I'm gonna leave some of these pits and hammer marks in it because I want it to look forged uh, but now I'm on I'll take my cut off wheel and cut that off and uh, we won't be far from from hanging a handle in that but I'm gonna take my time on it I don't want to make a mess out of it yet I don't want to make a mess but I'm not worried about it being just the most beautiful thing you ever saw. But I think everybody should be able to do as much as you can on your own. Uh, invest in tools. I'm somewhat mechanical minded. I do things with my hands. That's why making pottery came natural sort of to me. But if I figure out that I enjoy something or I'm interested in it, I can learn how to do it. Now, if I'm not interested in it, I ain't never going to learn it. If I'm if it's out of just I got to do this, you're probably not gonna have much success with it. But if you enjoy something, you can learn it. I wish I had a lot better ammo. I just hadn't justified in my mind spending that amount of money yet. got a set of tongs over there to hold that with. It was getting warm as I got close down to. I think what I'm going to do now is change like, this little, this is just a little small tabletop uh, belt grinder. 
and I'm hanging up right here at the rafters. I got a couple of different grit belts, and I've got some more in there. This is a 120. I think that one is a. Uh, this is an 80. I think I'm gonna go straight to the 120. I want to take it slow. And what I do because I, if you can with a heavy grit, this is like a 60 or 36. I don't know what this is that I was starting with. If I can get that on back up there, uh, here we go. It'll take a lot of me off quick, but you can make a mistake quick. just about that long to take that down to an edge. Now it's got some burrs and I've got a lot of work to do on it as far as hand work, but as far as a belt grinder, that's down to a, to a sharp edge now. I am thinking about going ahead and tempering this cutting edge on this because all I got to do is heat just the edge up and uh, you have to watch now when you're heating an edge them thin edges, it'll get hot and it'll melt before you know what's going on. So, be careful doing it. But I'm going to heat that edge up, dip it in my oil. I've got a, I don't see if I can pick it up here. This is a piece of channel iron with a piece of four inch tubing welded down to it. And it's oil tight, you know, water tight, air tight, whatever you want to say. It's holding this oil. Uh, it's filled up to about right here with oil, and with a four inch tubing I can step about anything I'm going to dip down in there and quench it and, and harden it. So, and that's m the method to my madness. So. I wish I had started filming the beginning making of this tomahawk. But I started it over a year ago and it's been laying here for I don't know how long. And I just decided a while ago I'd pick it up and finish it. Get this up where you can watch this process. It'll make that oil boil in there when it goes in it. If you want to clean it off, that oil should burn. I 
black it up real good. All we gotta do is cut this off with a cutoff wheel. I have to do that in yonder. All right, we got it cut off. Kind of crude. I'm gonna swap them belts back over to that aggressive belt, and I'm gonna round that up a little bit on the edge smooth it up and then I'm going to try to take it down a little bit flatter I'm going to do a good bit of grinding and I'll put them on. take a look at this. I do put my glasses on occasionally. You know, they don't hardly keep that stuff out of my eyes when I keep them up here. I, 
I had them like that one time, like this up here on my eyes. And I went to get that metal dug out of my eye at the doctor's office. And he said, you didn't have your glasses on? I said, yeah. That's right up on top of my head. <laughs> it don't help nothing up there. But anyway, look at this. It's got some pits in it. I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to make it look a little bit prettier. But hey, man, that, that don't look bad. For old country boy out here just got him a hammer and an anvil and a forge and went to beating on metal. Shoot. That's the first thing I've ever forged like that. I'm going to have to say I'm a, I'm, I'm a mite proud of it. I have to hold it up against something light colored where you can see. You can't see. If I hold it right there, it is like it's gone. And i tell you something else I figured out. When you go around there, whatever that wood is in front of my porch, that's ice. I didn't fall down. You see, my, my butt's dry. But I did slip a mite. I think I'm going to swap belts. I don't know why I keep putting this belt back up there. I know I'm going to use it again. Oh, Nelly. You see that thing trying to leave, take off? But I know if I don't put them back up there, the next time I get ready for it, I won't know where it'll, the wind will blow it and no tell it where. Look at that. I got some horseshoes up there too. I won't make me a horseshoe knife. I'm going to heat it up and quench that in too. What do you think about that idea? Maybe it'll work. Alright, we got that mite hot. Let's whip on it. Straighten that up right quick. I don't like wearing them beating on that because I ain't seen too much flying get my eyes. But now that grinder will put stuff in your eyes and that cut off wheel too before you can say quick. Alright. We're not going to finish this knife. We're going we're gonna to just beat that kind of flat. Um, not tonight on this video. I'm going to quench this, harden this in, and uh, depending on how long the video is when I edit to this point, uh, I don't know if we're going to show putting the handle in it because I may, I'm more than likely going to use some hickory that I have and, and carve my own handle if I can. I'm going to do this shave horse and uh, draw knife and, and make my own.
tell y'all what else. I'm gonna just share a short secret with you here. You'll see some more of my junk. But right here in this smoker, this is an electric smoker. I salvaged this out of the junk too. There's a whole front shoulder off of a deer right there. Let's see if there's a piece of it in count. I got my old pocket knife. Man, put a pocket knife in your pocket. I don't care if you got a belt knife on your side long as your leg. Put a pocket knife in your pocket. If you're gonna fix stuff and work on stuff and do stuff, tote a pocket knife. You know, I mean, look right now, I need to cut some meat. I ain't got my belt knife on for starters. You can't see nothing out here. It's too dark, but you get the idea. I'll just be flat honest with you. That's that very same front shoulder that I threatened to throw away when I was skinning that deer. I done dug it out. And I done coated it down with some picking and grilling. I wish y'all could see that label. Anyway, there you go. Picking and grilling. That's Scotty Chun them. Y'all need to get That's the original. I like it better than any of it. They got some banjo dust. I call it banjo dirt. Fiddle fire, and I don't know what all. Check them out. They, they make some good seasoning. Well, let's see if that's what we can turn the hammer into this black. I guess y'all wanted to look too. I don't know what you're doing still looking over yonder way. Y'all gotta keep up what's going on. Now I lost my gloves. I spent 50% of my time looking for something I laid down while my mind was on something else. I ain't got to get that hard enough to temper it. I just got to get the pores opened up where it'll soak oil up. Let's see if it will. Get y'all a good picture of it. Yeah, fo fo long. We'll do you do your video on uh, putting a handle and all that in there. We may film the rest of this knife when we got. I'm fixing to cut this off and uh, leave it alone for tonight. I ain't gonna. Uh, I was just playing with that as I was finishing this up, and I just wanted y'all to see some of my blacksmithing stuff here. Oh. Um, We'll get another video putting a handle and all in it. I'm sorry that I didn't film the very beginning of when I first started. I just welded a, took a, my MIG welder, welded a, that rod onto this. And uh, it's too heavy a rod. I should have used something smaller. And I had smaller stuff laying here. Uh, they, this is half inch key stop, which that's pretty long and got some weight to it too. 
I tell you one thing, a lot of the smaller stuff I cut up into steaks for my traps. But I just welded that on there, stuck the hammer head of that, and you've got to have an older weld, good, in other words, good metal, the older ball peen hammer. Don't go buy a $3 junk one at the Harbor Freight. I ain't going to say it won't work. You do want to use good steel. Uh, when I stand here and tell you that it just has to be functional and, and I do common man thrifty cheap all the time, but you need to use quality metals um, like that spring steel. Now this lawnmower blade, I have no idea what that metal is, but I assume that if it's tight enough to make a lawnmower blade, that it'll probably make a knife because I can harden it. I had a, a, a show enough knife smith tell me that if you're questioning the metal, if it'll make a knife, he said most any metals will make a knife, but if you want to know how good a knife it'll make, he said heat it up cherry red and dip, dip it in water, in water. Then bring it over here to this anvil and hit the corner of it, and if it breaks straight off, it'll make a knife. If it don't harden hard enough in that water to break when you heat it up cherry red and put it in water, then it's not going to make a real good knife. And this this was an old, rusted up hammerhead. Ball peen hammer. Handle was broke out. Got it at a pawn shop. Picked it up somewhere. I don't remember. It was good one though. And, uh, so I just welded on here, heated it up, and started beating on it. And I just beat the, the cutting edge down to flat to like I liked it. Uh, now your skills on this will determine what this shape is. Mine are not that great, so I just did the best I could. There are a lot of people that can forge a whole lot better than I can, do it every day. I've, this is the first time this forge has been fired up this since back early in the spring. So, and it's February. So, all winter and all fall, I hadn't forged anything. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the backstory behind this. And I'll try to edit some of this video out where it ain't so long. But uh, I just wanted y'all to see what I was doing with this. Thank y'all for watching my videos. Uh, and we'll be coming back to you with another one with this. I hadn't, I've had trouble with my computer. My beaver skinning video is on there. I hadn't got it off yet. Uh, we've tried to finish up the smokehouse. I hadn't got it finished, but I've got some footage on. We've done a bunch more work to it. And I hadn't been able to get that video out because my computer's, I, I can't use my computer. So I'm having to film some stuff on my iPhone and edit it and everything on my iPhone. So videos have slowed down some. But y'all hang with me. We're going to get some more videos coming back at you pretty quick. We passed hunting season. Trapping season's probably fixing to wind down for us. And we're fixing to do some more hide tanning. I've got some deer hide strung up. and I had not been able to film everything because I just do a little when I get a chance. And then I don't really do the whole thing at one time. We're going to bring you some more videos. So thank you all for watching. We'll see you all next time. The best way to do things is the way you want to do it. Have a good one. We'll see y'all later.